I think most um, most critical race theorists would argue, I think, in favor of racial abolition if they go down the path far enough, you know? <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, here's where I spit my coffee out. I was like, <laughs> what? What well, the I, fuck? I'm assuming, I don't know, because I looked up this term, racial abolition. This is, I assume this is something he made up. I couldn't mm. really find this term. I'm assuming this is, sounds like colorblindness, right? Yes, it seems that's to be exactly a what it is. Corollary of um, gender abolition. Right, that's what I assume. That's what I assume. Yeah, and but it, this was insane to me because I'm like, wait a minute, the entire foundation, the literal entire foundation of critical race theory is being against colorblindness, is being against <laughs> race abolitionism. Like, I, what the fuck is he talking about? This I is just love it. Like, what? Bush is like one day. Hopefully, critical theory will arrive us at the position that Sargon of Akkad was advocating for in 2013. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> exactly. It sounded like he joined us. It sounds like this is Vosh's yeah. position right here. Comrade I'm like, oh my Vosh. God, you're one of us. <laughs> it's, Seriously, though, it's he's not. You know, it's not wrong, but it's it's not true, really, is it? You know, no, not remotely. There, there's there's an implicit sort of Marxist assumption that the power imbalance has to be rectified. And this requires some kind of action. And so you're never going to be able to justify getting rid of race if that's right. the way you come to this conclusion. Right. Well, I mean, also, they believe in, what's it called? The cultural hegemony, hegemony where it's yeah. like, oh, the dominant culture, which in critical race theory is the white culture, you know, they, they, so, they take the whiteness, they take all these white cultural values, and then they become invisible to white people, and they push them on these poor minorities and make them you know, follow these horrible, evil white culture unquestioningly. Standards. Yeah, exactly. With, with all the standards. There was the... Um, <laughs> Those horrible the evil standards. standards. Like being the, the on time. Yeah, like the... We here at Sitch and Adam do not believe in being on time, just, just so you guys know. <laughs> that's true, that's true. We, just, we get rid of white standards in that regard. <laughs> and was confirmed the, not white. There was that Smithsonian chart where that was like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, white culture is being on time, is being objective, is believing in yeah. science, being rash. And everyone's like, what the fuck is this? This is insane. This is insane. And so how can you propose that and then also believe that down the road you're going to be for colorblindness or race abolitionism? Yeah, it's yeah. obvious nonsense. You can't characterize anything in the world without racializing it. But we're the racial abolitionists. It's like, yeah, I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be lying. I mean, just saying. Why is it, here's, this, this is my question watching this video. Does Is Vosh being deceptive here, or is he just doesn't fucking know anything? I think he, he just doesn't, doesn't know anything. Know anything. About he doesn't know anything. The, the no, boldness on, that he on. came out talking about how he was going to educate everyone at the end of this video is laughable, man. I, I think you underestimate the extent to which Vosh is a massive liar, to be honest. <laughs> really? Oh, my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just Walsh, come, like no holes barred here. Jeez. Well, he is. I mean, he is literally someone who is committed against the idea of ethical consistency. Yes, we have him on well, record. That, for, that, I think we did it like an eight hour live that, stream. We did that stream that. with Mahler. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, he, he's literally advocating away from ethical consistency. And I would suggest that's basically the position of a villain. That's what an evil person does, right? It's okay when I do it. It's not okay when you do it. And that's justice. So fuck you. That's that's evil, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, don't think that there's anything, uh, like, I don't think there's any level that Vosh won't stoop to in his defense of his tribe. And yeah. uh, and I think that's just what you're going to see here. Like you were saying a minute, a minute ago, like, James Lindsay says something, Vosh says, no, that's complete bollocks, and then just reformulates the exact same statement. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You know, why would why why would you do something so obviously and embarrassingly dopey? But he does it because it's about oh no, our team right, your team wrong. Even if we agree on the same point, you're still wrong. You know, and it's just transparent. And so, like, don't expect honesty or good faith arguments from a person who has that mindset. True. Yeah, it's super sad. It's super and sad. It, it's funny because later in the video, Martin Luther King Jr. comes up and <laughs> Vosh uh, cast him as a radical socialist. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I found I found this great quote from Martin Luther King Jr. where he says, "Communist would insist that the means justify the end. So if killing a thousand people will bring about a good end, the act is ethically justifiable. It is at that point that I am radically opposed to communism. Really? Destructive means cannot bring about constructive ends. The means does not necessarily justify the ends. For I would insist." that the end is pre-existent in the means. Wow. Wow, Very that's nice. that's Martin Luther King. Just a commie, King. mate. Just a commie. Yeah. You don't know what you're Based talking about. Martin Luther King, King doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow, that's great. Now I know why that guy's so famous. Jeez, that's <laughs> awesome. Behavior, not your values, not your environment, your race. That's not true. In critical race theory, if you are a member of a minoritized racial group, <laughs> their term, not mine. What do you even what do you even say? What's he saying that that's not true to? That critical race says that race is more important than your values and your environment. Basically, James Lindsay made a statement. Therefore, mm -hmm. Vorsch must oppose that statement, no matter what that statement was, because Vorsch is opposed to James Lindsay. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Well, I, they're attacking people's value. They're associating people's value with their skin color. That's the whole idea behind the whiteness thing. Mine? Yeah. Is it? You are a victim of a system that is rigged against you. True. A system that doesn't want you to succeed. Yeah. It's On true. the other hand. <laughs> so, but see, this is what I said. He's like, yeah, yeah. Race is <laughs> like, James Lindsay says, like, oh, critical race theory says, says, you, says your race is all that matters because you're part of this rigged against system. And then Vosh agrees with that part mm -hmm. but disagrees with the, just the way james Lindsay is phrasing it that's right i'm a race abolitionist <laughs> privileged you're loiter whether you intend to be or not critical race theory so this point is a little bit nuanced okay we're gonna need to engage in a little <laughs> bit of nuance all right everyone get your, uh, stretch out a little bit okay so sometimes you'll hear arguments from progressive people saying that like the whites are always exploiting, even if they're not personally racist, even if you never personally benefited from the labor of a slave directly under oh, yeah, your employee or control, I guess, because you didn't employ slaves, um, you still benefit from the systems of power that um, those things took place. In. Ultimate and that's power! True. So I'm a white guy. I have never, this is to my knowledge, okay, I've never owned a slave, and you know, don't think so. I, just, I, I have no reason to believe it. The, his, his argument, though, <clears throat> I mean, I hear that on Twitter all the time. Like that's a that's a that's a that's a rank argument now. That even yeah. if you are racist, you are racist because you participate in these systems of power, and I've also been white that privilege. For literally ten years, you know, like yeah. for fuck's sake, this is the most stock rhetoric. Yes. So well, I can't tell it, if Vosh is agreeing with that or not, though. He well, first of all, he is agreeing with that. Mm -hmm. um, but it has to be his position, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. But. This is where I was like, oh, he doesn't know critical race theory. Because as you said, he's giving kind of the stock woke answer. That's not mm -hmm. actually what critical race theory means when they say this. Because critical race theory has this conceptualization, especially Derek Bell does, that race relations are sort of this zero-sum game. Yep. So it's not a question of, oh, well, you're ben if you're white, you're benefiting from some system unconsciously. It's like, no, 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 no. White people are actively have actively created a society that's stealing from black people in order to give to white people. And this occurs every day on a daily basis in every system of our country that we live in. So it's a we call far it capitalism. Yeah, exactly. It's a, <laughs> it's a far deeper, stronger claim than Vosh is, is putting out here because he doesn't know anything about critical race theory. And he's just kind of giving, as you said, the kind of stock Twitter answer to this. I wonder what he would really say if you put these questions to him, like, do are you in favor of that? Do you accept that? Do you accept these premises? Well, and this comes up later because uh, James Lindsay reads the that intro quote from Gene Delgado's book about how they're against uh, liberalism and neutrality under the law and and neutrality under the Constitution. And Vosh is just like, oh, that's all gold. That's all bullshit. <laughs> yeah, he just like hand it waves exists. it away. What? Well, they don't think it exists. Right. The very idea of neutrality is a form of white supremacy because this is something that is a part of white culture and therefore being neutral would be upholding white culture and not advancing black culture or something like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. They say um, the concept of neutrality and objectivity is a lie that white liberalism kind of perpetuates on black people to, so they don't realize that they're being taken advantage of. Terrible. I don't so, know white people, even, why white people would go um, to all the effort of like freeing the slaves and then doing this. What would be the, why not just have fucking slaves? If this is oh. your fucking attitude towards black people. No, seriously. If you've, <laughs> no, how, how does a progressive explain why white people freed <laughs> the slaves? So, so Derek Bell has this concept called interest, interest convergence. And it's basically that white people only help black people when it suits their own interest. And he actually has an explanation for this very question. Oh, okay, go on. Really? Okay. So 
the his explanation for why there were white abolitionists was because it was actually pro-white labor unions <laughs> who oh, were yeah. afraid of black slave labor taking away their jobs. But we know that wasn't the case. We know. know that the the slave labor is inefficient, and we know that the North is an industrial and free powerhouse. Trash yep. the yep. South because and, of this. And then his second Fuck. claim. <laughs> His second claim is that the only reason Lincoln, Lincoln didn't actually care about freeing the slaves. He says Lincoln only cared about preserving the Union and only freed the slaves in order to, to disrupt the South and get uh, Black people to be Union soldiers. So it was all a very cynical ploy. This, this, this is the is argument. I'm saying they're just all liars. They, <laughs> they just make up a, an internet blood sport well, interpretation Derek, of someone's motivations. I don't think Derek Bell's a liar. I think he has a very warped view of the world and he's like he has this this supposition that oh everything is racist like he's coming at it from this angle so he's going to look he's going to try to warp the information to fit that pattern we did a video on how's that, that not lying? idea well, well it's lying to yourself i guess i think it's all unconscious yeah. is what i'm saying yeah Oh, yeah. Like I, mean, I don't think like, I don't think Derek Bell sitting here like I know this isn't true, but I'm going to tell people this. Like that's how I conceptualize yeah. lying. 